Hello everyone to the first official episode of Road to GT Academy 2013. Uh, this is on braking and accelerating. Uh, what I will do first is I'll just run through the first 10 episodes I'm going to do on improving um, as a driver, uh, sort of the categories I've split it down to. Um, I'll sort of put it into a little list so I'll explain briefly. <coughs> so first episode, braking and accelerating. I'll explain that in a minute. Then we've got cornering, which sort of links with episode one, really, with accelerating, braking, etc. And then episode three is to do with consistency. So, um, basically taking what episode one and two is and just making sure you do that every time, over and over. Uh, once you've got consistency, you would then move on to racing and um, who you're, uh, like, who you're racing if you're racing good good players is it really necessary to begin with um, basically if you're racing amazing players and you're really far back or you're not as good then it might not actually be worthwhile you racing those and it might be worthwhile racing um, without sounding offending lower skilled players so that'll be what that's about I mentioned psychology in the introduction uh, that's a sort of a follow on from r who you're racing and actual racing uh, and how certain things can affect you um, just just with the mind and that is a big effect um, so that should be quite a detailed episode and then 6 and 7 overtaking and defending um, they obviously lead on from that and I'll just sort of go through some overtaking moves that you might not consider and uh, I've actually got a really good live episode, um, race that I recorded uh, with someone called uh, Ronan GT Dave, where he defends. <laughs> I'm trying to overtake him for 36 laps. It's about an hour, basically, and he defends very well. It doesn't give me any space, in a good way. Um, but I eventually get past eventually. But um, it took me that long to figure out how to get past. It was pretty crazy. Um, so it was well worth watching and uh, looking at. Then episode eight obviously is going to be qualifying and pole position, um, as it says there. Uh, basically trying to get those quick fast laps in you know like um, I have this sort of five lap technique or five minute technique where you can just out lap fast lap in lap basically um, and how then you can get improving and get fast laps quicker and then I sort of with nine and ten I thought I'd go to more of the outside world because exercise and food do make a difference and obviously it affects GT Academy as well and then ten is equipment um, as it, equipment doesn't really matter but obviously if you have better equipment obviously you might have more of a chance but you adapt to to what you have I mean the first GT Academy national finals I went to I'd qualified on a controller so you know it's easily possible really with that and uh, sort of they're the first 10 episodes I'm gonna run by um, it should be good if there's anything else anyone wants to add uh, give me a shout I know someone's mentioned setups so I'll do that so I'll just pause the video there a second braking and accelerating uh, it's sort of the start like the start of what you learn in Gran Turismo in itself it's the first test you accelerate you brake and you've got to stop in that point and it may seem a bit dismal and boring but it's actually a key key factor into um, in, into improving as a driver really uh, basically in this first clip there's, I've got a few clips from uh, it's mainly GT Academy license um, with a race at the end to show you the reason why this is good bad and what it can be used for for other episodes um, so this is the Tokyo one uh, I'll explain the breaking point and then explain why you should either be braking or accelerating Yes, you can roll through corners, but you either want to be doing one or the other because that way, you know, you're either stopping the car or going with the car. You're not slowly. If you're slowly reducing speed, why didn't you go in a bit faster, brake, and then accelerate faster? So, with this first clip, it's just a straight line braking, and it's. Um, I want you to just have a note of the braking point as we go through there. Right, so I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> um, I didn't want to tell you initially, just to have a look. It, I broke at about 105 
meter mark. Now this uh, particular test, there was a lot of fast Japanese drivers um, in the leaderboard when it was on. Um, I wasn't extremely high up on this because uh, of the next corner afterwards, because you have to properly nail that. Uh, but the the key to nailing this, uh, getting a good time, was to actually get a consistent first corner, which is this corner, and it's an easy corner to get consistent. So I tested the breaking point, so I'd start maybe at 100 meters, because that's where I start with most of my corners. Uh, I've always said that. And then if I overshoot it, I know I have to back off a bit, a bit earlier, or if I break too soon and I'm suddenly finding, oh, hang on, I've still got to make the corner yet. I then can start like pushing the boundaries a bit more and going to 90, 80, 70. But at this point, I tried 100 meters. I'd found I was just overshooting the curb on the inside because you can use it as an anchor point. But that's cornering, so that's the next episode. Um, so I, I break at 105, and I found that this was the sort of best point to to break. Um, so you'll just see me. Breaking, there's a bit of lag there, sorry about that. Oop. Let me just uh, turn that back a bit. So, breaking there. And notice I went straight onto the accelerator there. I broke, and as I just finished braking, I went onto the accelerator. Now, I'm sort of sliding here, but you notice it, it's a wide exit Tokyo, so you can go on the accelerator early, earlier. And because it's a bit of a straight, it's actually quite an important sort of part of um, accelerating earlier you gain extra two mile an hour it's a bit more time so, as you see there accelerate through car's a bit oversteery so obviously I have to sort of adjust so I'll just let this run through now just turn that volume down a bit for you and it's that corner there which is a real problem which is why the times were quite varied so I'll show you Rome now. Um, this was in the same car, and it's basically about sort of braking on a corner because if you know Rome, it goes into a left, in sort of a short right into a very long right-hand corner, which has a double apex. Um, so it's the same again. You've got to pick a braking point, and it's got some nice signs on the left for you to uh, pick out your distance. So you got 150, 150 and it's the same again start at 100 either work your way back if you're overshooting now obviously as it's a double apex it, this is now your own judgment in how you want to handle the rest of the track so you really because the sector time is just after the corner you've really got to sort of play about with the whole corner and, and where, you, where your break point is for the first corner and accelerating through it to get the most speed out of the corner because as, as you know once you start accelerating with this corner, you want to continue accelerating. You're not going to break then for 10, 15 seconds. So that's a huge amount of time that could be gained. So I'll just play this free for you. And I just want you to take note of the breaking point and then look at what happens when I accelerate. Oh, a bit like there. Oops. Here we go. So I broke about 75 meters there. I'm still letting go. Now, as you saw there, I was letting go, but I was still dabbing the brakes. So I could have done that a bit better, but because it's such a long corner, you will get that way. You will have to roll because you don't want to. You can't slam on your brakes on the corner for a very long time. You can trail brake, uh, but then it's sort of judging it. Um, but for the most part, you will always either be braking or accelerating. So now you can see I'm at f I'm fully accelerating, and I should be doing this now for the rest of this sector. <coughs> if you notice, there you go. So Madrid, it's the same again with Rome. It's uh, as Rome. So we're going to come up to the sharp hairpin at the end. Um, it's slightly different, as in we are breaking on a corner, but we're going to use the line of the corner to straighten out the braking. So essentially, we get more braking power. Um. So, I'll just play this through and then I'll explain afterwards why I did this. So as you can see, I'm accelerating up to the, uh, the corner. It's a slight right into a sharp left. So notice that I sort of tried to straighten the braking point out as much as possible. 
And then look, I'm instantly accelerating out the corner there, and I'm not going to touch the brake again. Uh, that's really the key, is if you can straighten a braking point out, then do it, because you're not sort of loading the car in a different way, or sort of going to cause an oversteer mo moment. Because if you're braking straight, that's all your car's doing, it's, you know, it's going in a straight line. You're not turning the wheel, it's just braking. Whereas if you're braking on a corner like Rome, the car might start to oversteer and, you know, get loose and then it causes issues. It loses your confidence and, and things like that. you also notice there where I went really deep into the corner, because it's such a long corner. Got really deep and then accelerated straight out. Because, as I've said on the other clips, you need to either be braking or accelerating. Once you've done one, you really don't want to go back to that one, you want to continue accelerating. So I'll just play this clip throughout there for you. Now I've mentioned um, the brake markers uh, signs on the side, so Tokyo was 105, uh, Rome was 75, uh, Madrid, Madrid's a weird one because it's sort of on the corner and that's a very your own judgement. But Monaco is quite unique in that it's not got many signs and you can actually use objects on the side of the road. So uh, this is GT Academy again, uh, we're in the GTR I think, so it's four wheel drive. Um, the chicane previous, um, uh, this is sort of a secret of mine that not many people know when I tell them this, they're like really, really? There's a tree just before the chicane, now there's several trees on the right. But there's one that looks slightly different, and that's what I use as a breaking point. Um, I should really have got a clip for you, but um, I'll try and have a look and upload it to YouTube, because uh, I don't think I've got many clips of Monaco. Uh, but yeah, it's a tree on the right, and it's a it's the perfect place to break for Monaco, she came. It really is. And there's not that many people that know about it, surprisingly. But anyway, yeah, back to this. Uh, so similar to the tree, uh, this time... Uh, I'll play the clip and I want you to see if you can see what I use as a breaking point, basically, and how I identify it compared to everything else. Oh, uh, I'll just replay that because that's sped up then. Uh, sorry about that, there we go. Don't know if you noticed that. I used a light on the right hand side, but I know it's the last light on the right hand side. I know the light's on the curb, and I know it's before the tree. So using the fact that it's on the curb and before the tree, and knowing it's the last light on the right, I can sort of judge my braking on that every time I come to that corner. I'm like, right, okay, look for the last light, bang, I'm on it, brake, turn, accelerate. So I'll just, what I'll do is I'll just go back a bit. So back on Monaco, if you're watching, watching. Last light, brake, turn in, and then accelerate. Notice I don't brake. I noticed I'd accelerated a slight bit early there, but I didn't touch the brake again. You never want to touch the brake again. Come off the accelerator slightly, go to half, go to quarter throttle, and then go full again. You're much safer doing that than braking and then accelerating because you're going to start loading the car in different ways and cause a lot of understeer and oversteer. So I'll play this through. Uh, you'll notice I use different brake markers at different points. And the next clips are going to show you why you have to sort of pick out your braking points, acceleration points, and then how you can use it to your advantage. <coughs> so I'm just watching this. Notice I'm constantly just braking or accelerating. I don't want to do one or the other again. So I brake and then accelerate. Alright, so you all know this. Oh, I'll just pause that there. You all know this. Uh, part of the uh, GT Academy twin rings m of Motegi and the braking point that's coming up obviously we've got signs on the left so it's quite easy now I've got a clip after this where it shows you why this is actually quite useful to know where to brake and where to accelerate and how important it is to sort of give corners sort of a ranking to yourself it's obviously a sharp corner with a long straight afterwards should get a huge priority of your sort of concentration compared to a corner which leads to another corner 10 meters later it's not going to really matter that much compared to 
a corner with a long straight after it. So I just want you to watch how I take this corner. Now I'm in the uh, 370Z in here, and the next clip I'm in a GT86, uh, the Toyota. But I want you to uh, look how I take the corner. So I'm far to the left, I'm brake at the 100 meters, and I'm turning in. I was trail braking that, and look, I'm accelerating instantly. And notice how long now this straight is. Look, it's just constantly accelerating, accelerating, accelerating. So obviously that's a very important corner. You brake and then you accelerate and you accelerate as early as you can. So just pause it there. As you can see I'm racing Ghost uh, for first place. Now um, obviously Ghost is going to defend this position on the inside and I'm going to go to the uh, left hand side of Ghost. Now we're clean racers so obviously we're just sort of fighting for victory and it's going to show you two different lines uh, similar braking points but how the position on the track obviously affects Ghost but how an earlier acceleration really gives me that much more speed uh, so what I'll do is I'll play this so as you can see I'm just tucking in I'm then moving to the left it's a bit longer braking point but notice Ghost is braking at the same point as me but notice how early I accelerated and look how much more speed this gives me now as we go through Notice I'm still ex still going faster than Ghost here, and then I'm through. Now that that sort of thing then leads to the cornering aspect uh, of sort of the next episode, which is sort of why I'm sort of trying to lead them on from each other. Um, but as you notice there, um, I'll just replay this ex as well. Is that Ghost couldn't accelerate as early as me, and it gave me such m such an advantage so I don't I don't know exact times there I must have gained a tenth and a half from being behind goes to then getting ahead but that's one corner worked out properly with braking and accelerating uh, cornering as well is in there but braking and accelerating and um, because if you work on one part of a of a track rather than trying to work all of it you'll actually gain time that way so if you work on one corner build up get it right and then move to the next one so I'll just play this again just so you can have a look and just see the difference in speed as me and Ghost break up the same point because you know Ghost is a GT Academy finalist as well so obviously we're hitting the limits here so if you just watch this we both break he, he knows where I am but look I'm accelerating he's not accelerating yet he is there you go And that's basically sort of the key thing I want to sort of recognise with this episode is that braking and accelerating, even though it's the most simple part of driving or racing on Gran Turismo, it's one of the most important if you can get it right. Because when you can start putting that together, so then you've got the chicane just before that first part of the straight, if you then start working on that, getting the acceleration through that right, you've then got two parts. So if you then gain a tenth and a half on each of those, three temps and you apply that to each and every corner with you just your braking and accelerating you could talk a second depending on your skill level you could be talking three seconds so applying just simple braking and accelerating accelerating techniques where you're braking at a certain point you then accelerate if you accelerate too early just back off slightly half acceleration quarter acceleration doesn't really matter as long as you're accelerating you have a braking or accelerating you don't want any real gaps. So yeah, that's been the first episode of Road to GT Academy with Breaking and Accelerating. Hopefully that's been okay. Um, any questions, feel free to put them in comments below. Uh, feel free to share this around to people. I really would love just to help everybody improve. And the next episode will be coming out on Monday, uh, which should be on cornering and sort of applying what we've learnt here to cornering and then we put them together and hopefully build an overall picture and then obviously we go on to episode 3 and then from episode 3 I'll also try and put a bit of a challenge in at the end of the video sort of a way to improve uh, or use um, what we've learned so thank you very much and